Welcome to iLecture Online. It is always a good idea that you know how to mathematically calculate the tension on a string when an object is accelerating upward or an object is accelerating downward. But at this point, once we know how to do that, it makes a lot easier if you just simply hold on to these particular principles. From a conceptual point of view, we know what the tension in the string should be when an object is simply hanging there and not accelerating or moving at all. So in this case, if the acceleration is equal to zero and the velocity is equal to zero, not that this is important because it could be constant velocity, but simply just to make it simple, let's say the object is simply hanging there, what would be the tension in that string? Well, if you know that the force of gravity is pulling downward equal to the, with the force equal to the weight of the object, and then the tension needs to counterbalance that. In this case, you can simply see that if nothing is accelerating, that the tension must equal the weight of the object, at least in magnitude. Obviously, it'll be the opposite direction. At this point, it's not a big leap to realize then that if you accelerate an object upward, that the tension in the string will have to be greater than the force required to simply hold it up against gravity. You know that the tension must be equal to the gravity plus some additional force required to accelerate it. And since we know that F equals MA, it makes a lot of sense that the additional force simply would be the mass times acceleration. So the tension in the string will be equal to the weight of the object plus the additional force required to accelerate it upward. So graphically, the way we can look at it is we have the weight of the object, which is mg, and here we have the tension, which is equal to mg, plus the force required to accelerate it. So in this case, that would be mg plus ma. And therefore, we can see that when an object accelerates upward, the force required equals the weight of the object, plus the force required to accelerate it. But what if the object is accelerating downward? Well, think about it. The faster accelerate downward, the small the force needs to be to hold it against gravity. It requires more force to hold it still without it moving than to allow it to accelerate downward because we're giving in to some extent to the force of gravity and so you only need a little bit of force left to keep it from going completely to free fall. In the end, if you allow the object to accelerate at the acceleration due to the gravity, the tension required would be zero because essentially you can cut the string, the object would fall and would accelerate A equals G. So that means that you know that the tension must be somewhere between the weight of the object or zero. In other words, in this case, we know that the tension will be somewhere between mg, will be less than or equal to the tension, less than or equal to zero, for the case where acceleration is either zero or negative. And if I take this part away, then you know that if there's a negative acceleration, the tension must be less than the weight, and it can be as little as zero, if the acceleration equals the acceleration due to gravity. Essentially, you can then say that the tension is equal to the weight of the object minus the force that it requires to accelerate it downward, which is ma, and if a becomes equal to g, then mg minus ma would be zero, and the tension would be zero. From a conceptual point of view, or using some intuition here, we can realize that in the case of acceleration is upward, the tension is mg plus ma. If the acceleration is downward, the tension is mg minus ma. And in the previous video, you saw how we can actually calculate that. And that's, once you understand this, it's either mg plus ma or mg minus ma. Accelerate upward, it's plus. Accelerate downward, it's negative. And that makes it very easy to find the tension in any string in a situation like this.